<laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Nerdist Book Club, live on Nerdist and Geek and Sundry's YouTubes, as well as Geek and Sundry's Twitches. I'm Hector Navarro, and joining me are my longtime book club co-hosts, Rachel Hine and Maud Garrett. Hi! It's a trap! A trap! <laughs> Many Bottoms died to bring us this information. Luke! 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 <laughs> oh, no one does I am Aunt Baru, you know? Nobody does that Aunt should, Baru. That should no one does. happen more. Yeah. I yeah. once interviewed her before when we did the Star Wars. Well, no, not her. Young Aunt Baru. Oh, yes. Yeah. From, from episode three? Yeah, who yeah. Still, I don't think has a line. But she was very nice. She's um, married to uh, Joel Edgerton, Ozzy. Oh, in he, real oh, life or no, in the movie, Joel, yeah, Joel, oh, Joel, yeah. Joel was Uncle Owen. Yes. Correct, yeah. correct. Oh, I thought you meant in real life. I was like, what? No, that's um, cool. Yeah. So he's anyway, dating the Vogue fashion she was editor. Very nice. Young Amperu. Yeah. Young Amperu. Yeah. I think I interviewed her once too. I think she was very nice. <laughs> yeah. Amperu. That's cool. Too bad she got burned to a crisp. All right, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all to you at home watching and joining us online. Uh, this is our live book club where we discuss all of our favorite nerdy tomes with you in the chat. This is our third week covering the book, Star Wars colon Bloodline right here by Claudia Gray. And it is freaking fantastic. Awesome. Uh, the, the book follows, if you're not aware and you're just joining us for week three, that's fine because we're gonna make this conversation so good. You're gonna to wanna to go back and read it to catch up with us for next week, which will be our last week. And then we're gonna read something new. But the book is about Leia Organa, AKA Princess Leia, AKA Senator Leia. What is, what's her title in this right now? Senator She's like, Organa. Senator. Senator Organa, thank you. And Princess thank you. Still. Correct, yeah, but even though it's kind of informal, but people still keep, you know, we know, they keep putting it on her. Uh, and she's navigating politics and espionage of the New Republic Senate six years before the events of Star Wars The Force Awakens. And she's constantly telling us about how her son, Ben, Ben is off training with Luke and they have like no contact. And so it's, yeah. it's it, to me, just a little sidebar, it's this bubbling tension of like, oh no, it's gonna get real bad and they have no idea. <laughs> also, anyway. I think it's also interesting to look at relationships in a galaxy far, far away because this is a married woman who can't talk to her son and hasn't seen her husband in what months? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's like, damn, it's tough. It is really tough and things like this, I mean, I've been talking about I feel like we've all been talking about this each week when we talk about Bloodline. We're also talking about like the greater Star Wars books as a whole, mm -hmm. the comic the books, all of the great, all of the extra stuff, all the extra current canon. That's where you get the meaty relationship stuff. You're Which lucky. We get a lot of in this section. So much. We get to we get to spend time inside Leia's head and see how she's feeling about things and she how she felt about things that we never got to see in the movies. And we're lucky if we get one good relationship between two characters in these kinds of movies because they have a two hour running time and they're always about adventures in space. So we're lucky in right. Empire Strikes Back if there's if there's something between Luke and Yoda, if there's something brewing between Han and Leia, we're lucky, you know, something between Darth Vader and Luke. And for the new sequel movies, I feel like a lot of that focus comes down to Rey and her relationships with characters, which I'm like, that's good. That's probably what the focus should be. And yet iconic characters like Leia and same as the original trilogy, get kind of pushed to the background a little bit, but this is her time to shine. All right, so here have been the big reveals so far. Lady Carisi or Carice? Lady Carice. Lady Carice? Uh, lady bitch. Yeah, for, this, uh -oh. for this section, I know. Lady Carice is basically every big oh. reveal related to every big group. Hey guys. Reveal. Yeah, there's yeah. An there's an error. Era. There's an error. Oh yeah, there's I've a refreshed. spinny, spinny wheel. Uh-oh. No, no. It's crash. So us? skipping. We're Skip checking ahead. this stuttering issue out. Hector sounds like a great politician. This okay, is it looks like it's back again. Okay, I pressed there we refresh go. for people if you're in the same boat as me, but you can't see that because you haven't pressed refresh yet. <laughs> and uh, uh, for more technical updates, I will be helping. There we go. Reload, reload. Game <laughs> Wizard. Game Wizard in the chat says, this is where TV shows are needed, like The Mandalorian, to explore yes. characters rather than giant epic plot narratives. I could yeah. talk about the fact that Star Wars spending a lot of time on movies it probably wasn't even the smartest decision because their TV shows are actually the where their yeah. strength lies, especially in the last sort of like 
what five years clone wars um, clone Rebels. wars was just outstanding yep. television uh, mandalorian at, is able to kind of like flex by making great production and having an overarching story mm -hmm. for all of their episodes i'm really looking forward to obi-wan's story if that's still going on like right yeah so i i mean as great as the books are i would really like to see this play out i think obviously he, exactly um the part the hardest part is is that the actors have obviously all aged that 30 years so like we saw with the Han Solo movie Alden Ehrenreich playing a young Harrison Ford mm -hmm. but there was a little bit too much disconnect for me for that like mm -hmm. it wasn't Solo because I know who Solo is and he's right. Harrison Ford in all the movies but well, I'm excited about the options of TV now Correct, yeah. and Ewan is 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 Obi Wan. He's the guy. You know, he played him for way more and way longer than even Alec Guinness did. Alec Guinness, you know, was it played him in one movie and then had little cameos and little yeah. ghost moments. And Ewan was Obi for three movies and brewing you know, for some yeah. Ewan. You know what I'm we're brewing for some Ewan. True, true scorn in the chat says, drinking port in a storm. Are you, Hector? You just wait. You give me forty minutes. It's gonna feel like I'm drinking port in a storm. <laughs> 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 You just wait. Um, and Tim and Daisy said, love this section. I do too. This is my favorite section so far. I'm so excited. So so going back to some of those larger reveals, I mean, Rachel, you said it. Lady Carice is kind of revolving on all the big reveals. She's working with Hadrassian to create the first order. This section's the first time it was uttered. And I went, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> it was really well done in the audio book as well. It was the first the order. Oh. Yeah. And dun, I was like, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> oh that was gosh. a record, record scratch, record drop, <laughs> mic drop moment. I don't yeah. know. It was it was at that I gasped out loud at that that part because I did we we talked about it. We did suspect that Lady Greece might be involved some in some way. Something was up. Yeah. And also yeah. we yeah. We were right, just checking some we were right off. Yeah. Uh, that she found out about Leia. Leia's true parentage, although I did not expect it to go that dramatically. Damn. Well, we will music box, just a yeah. tragic personal we're, 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 letter from your dead dad who uh, raised you about your evil dad. When she actually, said, when she was like, "You've actually used both, you've used both of my fathers against me," yes. and I was like, "That's uh, so brutal." And it's yeah. so Star Wars. Dad yes. stuff is just the most always. Was it just me? Stuff. Was it just me? Did anybody else hear Jimmy Smith's voice in both of the sections where we heard that message played back? I heard Jimmy Smith's oh, really? one thousand percent. Jimmy Smith's. There was a voice awesome. reading it, but... especially that little moment in like Rogue One where they were like, "Are oh, you going to trust your agent? That person you said you could trust?" And he was like, "I would trust her with my life." And then yeah. turns around and you're like, "Oh no, he's going to go die!" No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh boy. I liked though with Ransom because we've like definitely the last couple of times we've been talking about it, we haven't yeah. really figured out where he lies. And now it's like he's a but, puppet. Yeah. You know, he has strong beliefs and he believes in what's right a lot of the time, but he also has this overarching sort of like disdain for Vader. So he was the perfect, like that was the perfect storm yeah. with he would have felt betrayed about the Vader secret. And also he worked, he's a centrist. And so it's like, he was just such a perfect yeah. malleable sort of like toy in this. It, it made it even, I think more of a turning of the knife in our hearts that it was Ransom who yeah. announced it because yeah. at this point we had gotten to know him, gotten to trust him or at least take him at face value, learned his story that I, I believed to be true where he hated Vader and the Emperor and every so like the fact that it was somebody who was politically opposed to Leia it's one thing it's like yeah that makes sense that it was going to be the opposite political party but mm. the fact that it was Ransom who had become yeah. her friend and afterwards Leia was like I still am thinking of him as a friend yeah and I'm still thinking what? about like how our relationship is going to work after this and I'm like that's so sad yeah I think it is a still a friendship they're both very hurt and I think he obviously gets this just gut punch of information and understandably assumes the worst because they are on opposing sides he did open up to her 
he's not really thinking about, well, duh, she didn't tell me her dad was Darth Vader. Like, I right. think once he gets away from it, it'll be like, well, look what just happened. I mean, she says it too to her friend. She's like, oh, hello. Like, <laughs> this is why I didn't tell anybody. Yep. But um, he is still hurt. and But she's also blindsided because he hasn't told her or talked to her about anything. So she thinks it's like some weird kind of gauche tactic to yes. get I, and yeah. just that both both of them get that feeling of the when your body goes cold it's like the most extreme version of like sending an email and thinking it was the, to the wrong person or said the wrong thing or whatever and you're just this might be just my work brain but my whole body will just be like oh no and it just yeah. like goes through my whole body that like panic and they both get that of like yeah. what yeah. I want to bring up two points about this. One, the narrator of the audio audiobook has crushed it. This yeah. particular moment, that realization, that that it, like uh, Jimmy Sprinkle says, that surprise gut punch. Like she relayed that moment so beautifully. I also want to commend Claudia Gray because there is one part that she wrote quite subtly that answered so many questions in this, and that was the fact that Lady Carice stayed with Ransom for the entire duration until the hearing happened until like mm. they went into the court because it's like she stopped him from directly going to later talk about it. Gotcha. She's, she was able to manipulate oh, and orchestrate yeah, that yeah. entire situation by staying with him and driving him to make sure that the only yeah. outlet to express it was in front of the entire Senate, which is like oh. the wow. most destructive way to do it. Because that's the whole thing where she's like, why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell me? And it was like yeah. the number one thing that she would have done. So by placing Lady Carice there, I was like, mm. oh. everybody. And, you, the and then you see how manipulative Lady Carice is and what a mastermind as well. She was Every, in that situation. Everyone in the chat right now is praising the narrator for the audiobook, which is fantastic. David Nichols Jr. saying that, Brian Versus, Miss Necromancer, talking about this moment and looking at something else that also is going to happen from this. Miss Necromancer said, congrats, Ransom. You were the butterfly wings that gave birth to Kylo Ren. That's crazy Ooh. and yeah. true. Oh. Yep. Yeah. And that was also subtle where she, she realized in the chapter after she spoke, like trying to get her thoughts together, the first thing she has to do, it's not tell Han. Han already, yes. he can deal. He's a grown up. Yep. And already knew. Yep. It's that Ben didn't know. And just there's I know he's like on a remote, he's training with uh Luke. Yeah. But like they probably get hologram news. I mean, possibly. I like he's gonna find out before she tells him or he's got like Well, you know what I think? Uh, I mean, we, we can talk about this. We can kind of speculate a little bit because I'm not to what I'm doing now. And I think us reading Bloodline has given me the excuse because what I'm going to do immediately when we're done is I'm absolutely, according to this order, I'm going yep. to then read Phasma and then Canto Bite. Oh, yeah. cool. and then and then and then probably like the novelizations for the force awakens and the last yeah. jedi Ooh. i want to dive into the sequel trilogy era of all the yeah. extra stuff so my question is like i don't know what the order of events are is supreme leader snoke already manipulating ben yeah right yeah. is is ben going to is ben already hearing or did ben already find out before he learns through the news that his father is or grandfather is Vader, which would I think lead Ben to be even more mad at his parents for not telling him like that yeah. as part of as part of yeah, what he was he found pissed out about. before they and he, they told and then him. Does, does does all that come to a head when Luke goes in and he sees that that vision of like this yeah. kid is going to kill his father, my friend. This kid is going to break the heart of his mother, my sister. Everybody that I love and care about is going to die because of this kid. I could just, no. And then he sees that. And then that's like, it, like I'm so fascinated by all that. I know there's a comic book about Ben Solo that, that, that Marvel has been doing. And did they just put it into a paperback, I believe? So that I want to go read. And I want to see like where the order of operations lines up. But yeah, I'm fascinated. Time, timeline and sort yes. of where that, where upset like interest and obsession turned into yep. uh or were taken advantage of by radicalization essentially you know mm -hmm. 
to to join and how does he connect to the first order and right. when does that happen because right now we know that well i mean we got to break down all the lady curry stuff um, i know but I, know. I i wouldn't mind actually a, a big thing thought kind of track tra train of thought that <laughs> was spawned from this was um call out culture because that's mm. essentially what's happened by Ransom not going to Leia and saving this vital information to address it with her personally and then mm -hmm. having that sort of respect. Oh, guys, keep refreshing, by the way. He keeps crashing on me. So that's going to be fun. But um, uh, the fact that had they had that discussion, it would have stopped Kylo Ren from forming. It would have, um, you know, stopped the First Order from coming about. Like the, the actual impacts of having like a face-to-face -face conversation would have been just astronomical. Um, and I, and I think that in today's day and age, people feel more confident or like there's something about being public about calling someone out instead sure. of having a conversation to them. And I've actually been on the receiving end of that when someone went to Twitter to declare something negative about me. And it was, uh, they, it was like not even a miscommunication. It was something that happened with my website that changed something and they f took it personally and wanted to make it public. Mm -hmm. And when I found out about it, I was like, oh, wasn't aware. That's something that I can fix in five minutes. But now you have made irreparable damage because you've announced this to all of my colleagues and you've, you know, made all of this slanderous yeah. and threatening accusations against me. Yeah. So it's like, well, how are you taking accountability for that? And I, I just think that, you know, I'm actually just not a fan of call out culture. I'm such, I, I think it's so much more beneficial if you have a problem with the person to talk to the person. Sure. And I'm wondering what the byproduct of making it a public declaration is. Obviously in this case, it's causing discourse. It's causing trust. Yeah. The whole populist faction has been, been made um, well, yeah, this untrustworthy. Is a political move. I think there's a difference to you know, even just the terminology around call out um, or cancel culture, I think is difficult because I think there's there's a difference between like that example, which is like just send an email um, or, right. or other things. And then there's, there's when it's an abuse of power or things like that. And I think they're both getting looped in together. And there's, a, I just think there's a huge difference between like, those two things. Yeah, um, I think and... I think sometimes they. Um, I think sometimes people use the public space in bad faith. I think they yep. use it because they know that it can cause damage to a person that they are trying to cause damage to, and that they're not necessarily concerned with. I want to make things right, but more like it's all for political reasons. And I feel like in the case of Leia getting called out. It, we know that it happens to be manipulation. We also know that Leia is a good person because we love Carrie Fisher and we love Princess Leia and we have for three plus movies and beyond. But I feel like it's interesting to look at this world and that's what the book is, I think, mm -hmm. trying to do as to, is, to, is to look at it from the perspective of a regular person who was not in the fight, who was not aware of, of the, the, the stuff that Leia goes through. And even mm -hmm. though she was, you know, very publicly and, and everybody was very famously a, like rebellion heroes, her and Luke Skywalker, and they became these legendary characters and her husband, Han Solo, who's this legendary smuggler. I still feel like there's an element to Ransom being so hurt and being so freaked out by the potential that the same thing that happened before could happen again, but this time with a female senator. Like the same thing that happened with Palpatine could happen mm -hmm. again. And, and to him the i feel like the the reasoning behind it makes sense to him yes, we know absolutely. it to be incorrect but to him i don't think he's doing it to necessarily for political reasons i really do feel like they built up that character they told us about his backstory and his experience to where when he goes to the senate and declares this it's because he believes in yes. the government from his perspective and he's, he's doing this he is doing this to prevent a potential dictator or daughter of a dictator from rising up to power and fooling everybody again. And the fact that Leia had kept this hidden is I think another thing that causes ransom and all of the, uh, and the people, I guess, in the galaxy who are, are gonna find out as well, 
causes them to freak out is the fact that it was hidden. Even her friend, her senator friend who came in to talk to her afterwards, Ty Lin, mm -hmm. even he was like, hey, how are you doing? I hope you're okay. Why didn't you tell us? Why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell your friends? Like even he was hurt with like, no, 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 I'm talking about just your friends. Just tell yeah. your friends about this. Yeah. And I think that from the That's angle hard, of- hard though. So hard. It's, because and, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's not her, it's her secret, whether she right. wants to tell you or not. And I, but I also understand that he's trying to say, you don't have to carry this burden on your own. But when he, for me, I'm hearing Tylin make it about him when it's about her, you know, if she didn't want to tell him like, that's that's a really interesting thing and i've actually been in that situation when my best friend came out and it was really hard to not be like because i was one of the last people to sort of find out mm -hmm. and i was just like a big part of me wanted to be like why couldn't you tell me mm -hmm. and i'm like this isn't about me no, at it's about all. your friend right mm -hmm. the so, difference is too is that i feel like we all will immediately come to the defense of leia because we know she's a good her. person we know her but I think that it is her decision to keep, but it's also like she's put herself out there and she's part of this galactic Senate. Like, like that it's no longer about, well, I'm doing this to keep my son safe. And it's something that, that I wanna, you know, that, that I'm trying to figure out on my family side, like, and, and I'll tell him when me and my husband are ready, but it's more like you are a Senator and you have a lot of power and people are looking up to you for leadership. And mm -hmm. if you don't clear out all the skeletons in your closet, like, you're gonna lose all credibility. Your party will lose credibility. The rebellion will lose credibility. All of the people that you're protecting will lose credibility. Like it, it's something where if the argument is, should Leia have come out with this publicly years ago, whether that meant she would have had a political career or not, I don't know. Because I mean, I feel like she, another reason she buried this secret is she goes for the greater good, for the greater good for my son and for the greater good for the galaxy, I'm going, to, I know that I can do what I'm gonna do because I'm a good, politician and I'm a good leader, but that means that I have to keep this thing secret and maybe it'll be secret for my whole life. And then she ended up being wrong. It's such a bummer. I am team Ty Lin. Your parents' <laughs> actions do not like, yes. they have nothing yeah. to do with that person. And the, yeah. the child cannot be responsible for their parents' actions. And we really go into nature versus nurture here because mm -hmm. it's so interesting to see everyone instantly distrust her, hate her, you know, uh, think that she's going to be a pure entity of evil because of that blood relation. But it's like, she was adopted at birth and she was raised by Bail Organa, right. you know, in a deployment. track record in the Senate and she's a hero and she literally fought against him. And it feels, and I, just, I don't I, think I, she owes anyone an answer. Right. And I don't think like, the only thing is she got talked into running for first Senator and that's where she should have in that yep. polar, and but she's doing so many things and trying to go off on this adventure that she's sort of pretending like the Senate stuff isn't happening. I also feel she like if she's wanted to if deal with it. If it's been a secret for 25 plus years, like you think it would it's I would yeah, I would be like, yeah. that is out of sight, out of mind. I never have yeah. to worry about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. But this is also like to be in the public eye, um, yep. especially in a political a sense. Election. Yeah. yeah. You know, the slander campaigns are a real thing. They are looking for skeletons. They are looking yep. to, you know, get information. They're living the nightmare that uh, has come from some yeah. of those. True Scorn in the chat has a great quote from one of our best, most recent uh, philosophical thinkers. True Scorn says, I see now that the circumstances of one's birth is irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. And that was, of course, said by the Pokemon Mewtwo, Mewtwo. said that. Mewtwo mm -hmm. said that, yeah. Pokemon, and po movie. Pokemon the first movie, Super that's profound. right. Yeah. Uh, Miss Necromancer said, that's true. We know that Leia isn't Vader Jr., but Ransom doesn't know that. Most people don't well, know that. Well, he kind of did, because he spent a lot of time sure. really like letting walls down and connecting yeah. with Leia and really understanding that. And he immediately said, well, she lied about that. Therefore, she's lied about everything. And right. his blanket oh. kind of put that on yeah. there. And so when she was just like, did you not listen to me? That he tortured me, that he's, you know, right. done all these terrible things to me. And he's like, oh, oh, you didn't tell me about the father, but everything yeah. else is true. And that's when he's like, oh, I effed up. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. uh, WJ Baggins has a great line in this too, lest we forget, right? Lineage is still weirdly important in this universe as they have monarchies on lots yeah. of planets. It's not right, obviously, but I think that has more impact. And here's another thing I wanted to ask you, Modern Rachel, because I'm just realizing this now uh, in thinking about, the, again, that sort of sequel trilogy timeline and what eventually happens to Luke and how he goes to Octu and then Ray finds him and then the whole story from there. But like, do people still consider Luke a hero, even though he is also the son of Darth Vader? He is Luke Skywalker, and like that news is going to come out, right? Because because in in Bale's message, he's like, "Your father was Anakin Skywalker, and he became Darth Vader." Like Bale is the one who who irons that out. He he puts that out there. So is there any kind of sexism in the Star Wars universe that this book will? hint at or go into where like immediately Leia's discredited, but Luke was the hero who saved his dad. But you know, cause that's how oh, Ray yeah. talks to him about that. She goes, you, you believed he could be turned and you saved him, you saved your father, right? right. And he's like, when he's hero. talking about, you know, at, at the height of their powers that Jedi let Darth Sidious oh. rise and- I'm not sure if it's, a, like, if it's a gender bias or a Jedi Knight politician bias, perhaps. Interesting. Because I think the Jedi's are revered in that particular yeah, way. I think you're right. And in this right. section, they, it's, um, I'm trying to remember what, who, who is thinking or saying this, but um, Leia is thought of as more tangible and more real because she's in the Senate and Luke is sort of has- Luke's gone. Been off yeah. doing his thing. So he's become more of a legend than a real person. Yeah. He's a mythos, yeah. yeah. But also um, I think that that does, can be distilled or can trickle down into gender politics of someone getting to be one thing and yep. not the other and vice versa. I Absolutely. will say though, when, when, Le when Leia spoke in the Senate, she wasn't interrupted. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And that's huge, <laughs> uh, really, when you that's think true. about it. That Not is actually very true. Watch Twitter from today and you'll <laughs> yeah. see Brian, yeah. Brian Versus in the chat says, Ransom must have broken his ankles from jumping to all of those conclusions. Uh -huh. And also a great comment from Brad Easton, reflecting on what we're talking about. Brad Easton goes, yeah, why does Leia take the brunt of it? Hmm, interesting. But no, I think I think Maude and Rachel are right. Like, I, I think it does have to do with Luke also being a Jedi Knight. Like, here's the beautiful thing about Star Wars. I think ultimately it is for kids and you can sprinkle in some stuff in there about issues like sexism and racism, but that's not what the Star Wars universe will ultimately be about. It's power, in a way. really. Right. It, 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 like you can put and that stuff in there. Good and, and I, bad. Yeah. And I think kids can get that, but it's, but it's not something that's going to heavily explore it. And I think in the same way that, like, like we were talking about last week or the week before, Han Solo is not going to be an adulterer. He's going to be a good guy. He's uh, the whole time. We got to the bottom of that yep. one, by the yep. way. Oh, thought it was pregnant. Ends up being blood burn. My bad. My bad. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Let's go ahead and go something. through the let's go through the chapters with the back half of this show here. Let's go through the chapters. We'll start at chapter 17. And I just want to also note, thank you, Maude, for not finishing the book. I really appreciate your friendship. Even so though often, you and Rachel did hear a little bit beyond what we were what we were supposed to yeah. stop. But that's okay. I was that's like, okay. Ooh, I, was I didn't get back. as far as Mod, I think. Um, <laughs> but I also listened through it twice. Okay. Uh, but great. off off camera. I obviously got a little bit of heat. Uh, they were like, did, you know, did you finish? And I said- <laughs> I don't um, know what you're talking about. After that very warm reception from everyone of what it would be like if I did, I don't exactly have a death. Look at you both sipping, sipping on those drinks. <laughs> I don't have a death wish. <laughs> but are. in yeah. saying that, it's an easy read and some people just decided yeah. to finish it and get stuck into some other books and you know- That's great. More That's great. To you too. I did start reading uh, Ian Fleming's first James Bond book, and boy, oh boy, is it misogynistic as hell. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, and James pretty racist. Bond? Pretty immediately in like chapter two, there's something about how a character has big earlobes, and then Ian Fleming, no. the author, was like, so it must mean there's some Jewish blood in it. I'm like, oh my God, uh -huh. this is horribly racist. Whoa. Well, that's anyway, other than that stuff, oh, it's. Wow. Pretty interesting and fun to read, and it's a real bummer. <laughs> Here we go. Let's get back to Star Wars, chapter 17. Casterfo pretends to be an Imperial sympathizer to get in with Hadrassian and the Amaxine army. 
and they're going to turn to the a Maxine. They're going to turn to the first order. Right. Adrasine mm -hmm. reveals that the young Amaxine warriors are training with force pikes as a test. She has Castorfo fight a duel with one of her men. Which uh, did anyone else cool. get kind of Dune Dune vibes? Oh, like yeah. yeah, 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 a little bit. I liked yeah. how he with like was... the hologram training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I I felt like he I I really um kind of felt his personal like when he's sort of flashing to Vader and all these different things and fighting and trying to prove himself he be, he was even more humanized to me as a character like obviously he and yeah. Leia are getting along and that's gone a long way but just in that whole section I was like oh yeah the like stiff you know dude is loosening up and letting his feelings out mm. sometimes that's good yeah. Yeah. And we got to see like him experience these visions or these sort of flashbacks of him as like an orphan fighting for yeah. scraps. Very humanizing. I think it made us like Castorfo. Well, that's the thing. It, well, it completely unraveled his pompous sort of like right. aristocratic BS that was really unlikable. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, he's actually not like that. He's not no, noble born. It I reminded me that. of like, if Castorfo, if we're casting him as a Tom Hiddleston type, yeah. It yeah. reminds me of like the Marvel movies where Loki like pulls out some knives and you're like, okay, Loki, okay. Yeah. Or in, in Kong Skull Island when Tom Hiddleston like puts on the gas mask and then just Man, starts like, oh, you know, I'm like, yeah. cool. Yeah, it was, oh, that scene. So cool. It's so good. So really good. just that movie full of bisexual lighting. It's fantastic. Okay. Mr. Thierry Fournier I says- to the director. That's right. And that's right. Up. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, okay. <laughs> they were like, what's that? I was like, oh no, I didn't think you'd respond to it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Put it in your next movie. Mr. <laughs> Thierry has a comment, says, Leia gets the brunt of it because she's a political figure in the spotlight. Luke is a hermit who has no, that has no political or celebrity pull in politics, which I think is a very interesting comment. I think yeah. that is very true. Back to chapter 17, Castorfo kicks a Maxine ass, proving himself to Hadrassian, he learns that they have over 1,000 Amaxine warriors at this base alone, but their home base is Sibensko, the same planet where Leia and Sibensko. Joff are headed. Sibensko. Castorfo can't reach Leia, so he decides to tell another centrist of his discovery, Lady Carice. She downplays the threat, and Castorfo realizes the centrists are just as apathetic as the populace. And he even was like, as I was saying this out loud to Lady Carice, I felt like, yeah, this is ridiculous. Like, mm. he was even tr like falling into that trap of like, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe this isn't something we Pepe should. Silva, you know, you're getting yeah. a little too murder board boardy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, oh, here's an interesting question that's in the script here. Castorfo and Greer are bonding. Do we sense any romantic vibes here? What about Lady Carice? Is uh, she really not worried about the Amaxine or is she more involved than we think? I mean, I think we know the answer now, we but- learned, We learned that, yes. At romantic, that point, we have not. Romantic vibes? They were having a little bit of like, mm, fun, playful Answer. teasing moments, but then yes. also Sea yeah. Striker and Greer have like some pretty- Yeah, like, she's got oh, mad chemistry. Did you guys drink every time uh, you hear how blue Joff's eyes are. <laughs> mm. Joff, mm. Joff looked with his very bright, incredible, mm, delicious mm. blue eyes. Yeah. I'm like, I get it. The kid's got it. blue eyes. <laughs> yeah. Modern was so jealous of that by a cake he took. Um, I saw it. I saw it. Um, <laughs> um, I want some. Uh, I want some no, I, I feel like she has chemistry with both of them, and especially like ransom like noticing when she smiles and how she doesn't normally smile and then being like Greer sounds like oh, a she, mega babe yeah like, yeah she's a badass she knows what she wants it. yeah but wait we also didn't we establish that Greer dies in the attack in force awakens like, no that was cool no that's poor Core. Oh no. I know. Yeah. Oh no. And in this section, she runs away in a huff. Oh no. Okay. She's, like, she's like 16. Am I getting old? Or did you also think that was incredibly disrespectful to talk to an ex boss in that particular <laughs> No, I way? definitely no. thought that too. No. I was didn't, like, they, didn't they say she was crying also? You? Didn't they say that she was, all, like, that both of Leia's people that she came and talked to were like, I'm out of here. Like that they were like upset because the, because yeah, the mythic. Were, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, but like, but I don't want to work with you. Yeah. Very personable right. management style. Yeah. She's not real, you know, she's not really. Um, well, as, as someone who. For that stuff and tells them like, call me Leia yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So 
that's the that's the the uh, double-edged sword of being yeah. a cool boss is like then people are like hey, we're gonna be boss. not gonna lie i am a boss and i do manage people and i often see myself sort of like relating to that layers chain of command and how she is a really really good leader and i'm kind of like applying it because she gets them to trust her there's a uh, good loyalty she you know, forms bonds with her team. And I was like, that's really like quite impressive. Yeah. But she still maintains this whole, yeah. you know, don't drink, oh, it's calf. Uh, it's not, you know, rocket fuel. Uh, um, and I, I, I don't know, I kind of like, like that dynamic. And so she's here going, I'll have some, thanks. And everyone's like, wow, she's so awesome. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm, I'm getting even more sad because Game Wizard in the YouTube chat says, Core was like, 26 in Force Awakens because I bet it's like 10 years later between this book and the film. It's only six years six. apparently. So if she was 16 in this book, she I'm was 22. Sure at the beginning it said she was 16. She was 22 in yeah. Force Awakens. Ugh. Yeah. And the First Order blew up five it's planets. Part of the whole Hosnian system. The whole yeah. Hosnian system. That's such a. Bomb. It's a big part of this book. Yeah. Right. out for the Hos. I'm like, they get rid of. Me. Yeah. You know what else is really cool is uh, everyone dies. Later we get to it, but uh, the I think that I think that we're gonna start building up the resistance in this book as well yes, because yes. those pilots Joff. that we're talking with Joff, one of the pilots was Elo Asti, who is that alien character that's in Force Awakens, and he's also oh. in like the po I think he's in the Poe Dameron comic books. He's one of the pilots, and Elo oh. Asti is a fun little Easter egg named after. Um, the Beastie Boys album, Hello Nasty, which the Beastie ah! Boys, J.J. Abrams is a big fan of the Beasties. So oh, he put amazing. that great little, so when I, when I said cool. Hello Asti, I was like, cool, that's awesome. Oh, Sabotage. That's so fun. Yeah, that's what I thought in that section too. Yeah. That oh, that's him. Yeah, he's the cool. Resistance. The resistance. Taking names, he's thinking mm -hmm. about who's saying like, I go on a secret mis mission or fight he's a like, rebel. Or he's like, okay. 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 Just I just, guys, the war. guys. If a younger fucking Poe Dameron shows up in this, I'm gonna flip my shit. I'm I gonna know. lose my shit. I'm gonna be so damn excited <laughs> if Poe shows up in this. You'll be oh so my God. Poe damn I'll be excited. so excited. Seriously. Poe Man. Damn All right. excited? Come on, the guys. M the right. cartographer. It took me a second, but I got there. Yeah. <laughs> I got it, Mod. M the cartographer in the chat says, young political interns are uh, still pretty idealistic. It probably feels like a huge betrayal to core. That's right. So. Well, she better to, grow up and learn that this is no easy. <laughs> but she's gonna grow up, stay in the Hosnian system, make it to age 22, and then die because of the first order. Because of Leia's, yeah. I mean. Yeah, well, can the we chain of, The chain of effects that happen here I know. are insane. And, and I don't really understand the first order's like hierarchy at all. So they, they're worshiping Palpatine. So it's like, it's that whole mm. thing again where it's like, they love the. I well, don't think Palpatine has returned yet. Somehow, I think it's just Supreme Leader Snoke. No, but who's, they, but who's they worship. So, what was really interesting right. I found is that even though the centrist party, you know, you've got Ransom and um, Lady Carice, they still have very different ideologies. Like you still have, you know, he's collecting all the memorabilia, but he doesn't like the dictator component. Well, actually, right. he, he likes the he likes the dictator component. He didn't like the abuse of it. So Palpatine, Vader, all of that they abuse their position of power to make it totalitarian and to make it sort of like super corrupt. But he liked the fact that there was a dictatorship and if you get the correct person in the job, it would actually be really great. Mm -hmm. But the two different uh, people in the centrists you know, are the ones that actually liked Palpatine and then the ones that liked you know, the structure. Right. And I right. think that that's really interesting as well in political parties where it's someone, I think it doesn't exist in today's day <laughs> with it because it's like, there's not shades of red anymore, but let's say it's about the shades of blue. Like someone can be far left and some other people can be a little bit more moderate in terms of like their mm -hmm. political view. So that was interesting for me that it's not a blanket sort of like think tank in terms of being in that same party. Yeah. I also think that's how they get you a little bit in Star Wars because as a good friend of mine says, it's a trap. Yes, that's a different one. Um, <laughs> how many you got there? <laughs> how many do you have? I mean, at my, where I am sitting right now, I have, I brought three. Do you have a one calamari or a mon calamari? <laughs> <laughs> These are the ones that I brought over, but there's more. Do you, um, quick, quick pop quiz here, Rachel. Do you happen to know, because I just learned this yesterday, Admiral oh, Akbar's first name, because Akbar is his last name. 
I used to at one point, I don't remember. I, it's not that I know everything about Akbar, it's that I found him extremely funny as a kid and brought him up a lot <laughs> and started getting gifts of him. And now yeah. I have so now that's many. that's the joke. But I well, don't. Kyle. If, if Kyle? any, it's not Kyle. If anybody uh, wants Guile. to know, it's not Guile. How do you Guile say Akbar? it? Akbar. What, did you just look it up? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, it's not, it's not Guile. That guy's from Street Fighter. I was no, too. G G I A L. Really? Maybe. Gile. Well, in Gile. any case, Giles? what I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna I'm trying to promote my buddy's uh, book that he wrote about baby names, geeky baby names that oh. is, that just came out, and he yeah. put Ak he put Akbar in there, including so many tons of he did so much research and included hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of baby names that come from geek spaces and what they oh, mean in the geek so world. Fun. So I, be, but yeah. I really want to name, I've, I've had this name picked out for my daughter for so long and it's a geeky. Erwin. It, it's like, it's like that. But then <laughs> there was a TikTok that a Gen Z made making fun of millennials. And it was like basically reading a checklist of my traits and um, my interests. And one of them was like, oh yeah, Gen Z. Oh, I can't stop talking about Harry Potter. And I get upset <laughs> if I'm sorted into the wrong house. And I was like, ha. Uh, <laughs> Another one was like, oh, I'm a millennial. I'm going to call my kid the character from my favorite video game. And I was like, you can shut up now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got it's, you. It's but, the younger generation's job to roast us. That's true. The we'll Zoomers are good kids. We'll take they're it. Gonna, they they're good kids. Way more they're good about kids. I love them. you call. Ugh. Learn to respect Ugh. people. <laughs> they make me feel young. They're good kids. Do you know what else I found out about this book though? It's mm. not Neen Num. It's Nyan Num. Yeah, Nyan Num. I did know that, but also yeah. technically in Star Wars Candidates, uh at at or no right yes. instead of at which doesn't make sense because know. what is oh, what is not an at at I, i've been dying on my at at hill for so yeah. long but it's also technically a tie fighter not a tie fighter so that's why yeah. that's where the, that's yeah, yeah anyway but, like, but how is that only because it? you can't say at s <laughs> yes <laughs> maybe yeah yes yeah um, um, not at s Great or comments from, from Brad Easton in the chat. Brad says, first of all, I'm going to watch Force Awakens after reading this now, which is awesome. And then Brad wow. says, I just asked my wife if I could rename our son Akbar, and she said no. Sad face. <laughs> I mean, his name is Luke, LMAO. That's great. Um, so, oh, Luke? 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 Luke. <laughs> Let me plug my buddy's book. It's called Naming Your Little Geek is my friend's book. My friend is Scott Rubin. Follow him on Twitter at yes. Norse Meat, not Horse Meat, Norse Meat, like Norse mythology. And uh, Scott Rubin wrote this book, Naming Your Little Geek. It's Norse amazing. Norse to meet ya. <laughs> yeah, Norse to meet ya. And here's some other great comments too. Brad Easton said, I totally did not put that, uh, I totally did not put two and two together with, with um, and the Hazian system being the one that they blew up in Force Awakens. So I feel like we're bumming Brad out. We're like revealing Sorry, to him what this <laughs> like all of the cool stuff they're setting up is just going to get blown apart that's um a, okay I mean, that's a big problem with prequels and i think yeah i'm i i am sort of amazed how much i'm liking this book but i think it's because the elements a we didn't get any huge connections to you know the big bad and sort of the arc of the sequel trilogies until right. this section mm -hmm. um with not just Ben eventually learn the first story. Us learning that Ben didn't know at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's only six years to go and he becomes this like supreme leader. So this feels like a big catalyst. But also that Lady Carice calls up her her not pal. They do not like each other. Um they're just using each other. Uh Hadrassian. Yeah. And I loved this section. And Do you know I, who I'm picturing Hadrassian as really quickly? Who? Um, Spider-Verse, doc, female Doc Ock. Oh, very nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Kath Catherine Hahn. Nice. Yeah, but like that, that's how I oh, picture her. her. Yeah. 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 Um, Lady Carice and the section, I don't know, Hector, if you can find, because I wrote it down when it, but I lost What section? It. What section? It's when Lady Carice is speaking, is has phoned 
Right. Well, let me jump back in and try to power through these chapters. And then yeah. whenever I get to that section, we'll yeah. take a little okay. diversion and talk about it. Sounds Chapter good. 18, Leia, Joff, C-3PO, and Corey head to Harloff Minor, a bustling trading center where they suspect- it, How does Harloff D- spell? H-A-R-L-O-F-F. I mean, yeah, is that because of Christian Harloff? It's got to be. Did it's they gotta name be. that after him? Because I'm like, sure. I'm where sure. the truck is a Garrett in Star Wars? And how do I get that happening? <laughs> hey. Or, oh, that's Karloff, not Harloff. It's misspelled, but I have a Navarro planet or whatever in The Mandalorian. But it's not how my last name is spelled, but I'll take it. Um, so this Harloff Minor, it's a bustling trading center where they suspect Rin Riven D spends time to appear legitimate. Leia decides to invite Rin Riven D to dinner. Rin Riven is disgusted by the napkin bombing, saying that persuasion is always the better tactic. Leia presses Rin Riven on his quick funding. Rin Riven brags about his business prowess and strategy, but Leia sees through him and knows he's prepared for this line of questioning. Back on Mirror Bright, on the Mirror Bright, which that was another gut punch emotionally when it was like, oh no, she named her ship after that. And that's the lullaby. Uh, Leia catches up on oh, messages and oh. news, right? Remember that part? Oh, yes. oh okay. yeah. The okay. napkin bombing has further polarized the New Republic with tensions between the centrist and populace. They're rising. Those tensions are rising. Chapter 19, Kosturfo and Leia catch each other up on what they both learned and what it means. Here's their theory. When Riven and the Maxine warriors are likely Max- Maxine warriors. Maxine? A Max a Maxine. A Maxine. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. That's what it is. A Maxine. Rin Riven and the A Maxine warriors are likely funded by the same shadowy enterprise since their investigation into Rin Riven was so public. Hadrassian and the A Maxine warriors were likely watching Leia and Kosturfo from the beginning. When Rin Riven's attempts at bribery failed and Leia and Kosturfo encouraged the Senate to investigate further as a team, the A Maxine army coordinated the napkin bombing as a way to distract from the investigation and polarize the Senate. But when Riven does not approve of this method since it risks the potential exposure to his criminal empire, Leia says she'll try to steer the investigation in the right direction while asking Kosturfo to look into the centrist senators to make sure they're not involved. They also decide to investigate this mysterious A Maxine base on Sibensko. Did I pronounce that correctly? Sibensko. Sibensko. Kosturfo throws a mini party for a bunch of centrist senators to try and get more intel on them. Many of them wax poetic about the good old days of the empire. That was a fascinating scene. Fascinating with a couple of drinks and everybody started being like, you know what? Hitler had some good ideas. I know. Man, that's bullshit. I know. It was like, make the galaxy great again. Oh and my God. Like, yeah. Can we say this? Like, no. no. Yeah. Don't Pretty make dream. it. Don't do it. Can Go I say? Reteach yourself. I mean, how to be and, a good person. Jesus. I know he was a bad guy, but Sharif Palpatine had some good ideas. Ugh, <laughs> Over on Berin, Lady Carice discovers a music box from Bail Organa to his daughter, revealing her true parentage. She decides that nobility is more important than politics, so she will keep Leia's secret, but she does hold on to the music box, right? Chapter 20. Joff and Greer go on another secret mission to Chrome Citadel, where they accept a job to smuggle material from Daxam 4 I to Sibensko. Yeah. Material, very I French. I know. Smuggle this material. Despite when I her- heard them say it, I was like, you dorks. <laughs> Claudia Gray, <laughs> you things. dork. Yep, it was fun. In, a, in the best way. In the best way. Despite her upcoming campaign, Leia decides to travel to Sibensko with Joff and Greer. She realizes that her time is going to be extremely limited soon, and she wants to join the adventure before it's too late. Kosturfo, though, he is concerned about doing an unsanctioned investigation, and he decides to join as well. Chapter 21. The team plots their secret mission to Sibensko over drinks. Kosturfo and Leia discuss their trust and distrust of authority and their respective parties. Lady Carice returns to Hosnian Prime so she can stash Bail Organa's music box in her Senate office. She decides to tell Leia she knows of her parentage, so she owes her a favor. That's what her original decision was. After bumping into Kosturfo, she realizes that he knows something. She immediately runs to her quarters and calls Hadrassian. Both of them are working for the First Order which is still in its infancy. Their aim is to undermine the New Republic to prepare the galaxy for the First Order. Hadrassian believes that Kosturfo is an Imperial sympathizer, but Carice isn't convinced. She decides to use her knowledge of Leia's parentage to turn Kosturfo against his new friend. Chapter 22. Joff realizes that other pilots are ready to fight if needed and saves some names, like including Elo Asti, to share with Leia in case they ever need them. Lady Carice reveals to Kosturfo that Darth Vader is Leia's father and that she knew about it and has been hiding it from him. Leia is presented as the populist candidate for first senator. And then Kosturfo very dramatically 
You're right, oh. Rachel. Very dramatically objects Leia's to Leia's nomination and reveals that Leia is the daughter of Vader himself. And then this is the last chapter, chapter 23. Castorfo plays the music box for the Senate, causing Leia to admit the truth. And I thought it was so interesting. They cut it off before the remainder of mm -hmm. Bale's message. So there's already some editing happening there. There's already mm -hmm. something to, for political reasons. Castorfo is hurt and angry over the revelation. Yeah, but also feels guilty about betraying his new friend. Leia loses the support of most of the populist senators except Varish and Tai Lin, and Corey quits in anger. Leia recalls telling Han about her real father after the celebration on after the celebrations on Endor the next day. They're partying with the Ewoks for like four, five days straight. It's yeah. crazy. Day two, she goes, Han, listen, come here. You know how mm -hmm. I told you yesterday? That She's like, maybe have another drink. Yeah, maybe have get some more Ewok juice. So my so Luke is my long lost twin brother. Even though I kissed him on the mouth, and uh, <laughs> and he probably had impure thoughts about me, and vice versa. But like we can date. He here's definitely the, did. Here's the other bomb. Here's the other bomb, Han. Darth Vader was also my father, and he was probably just like, I don't care. All right. Yeah, like, I know. Because Han's great. He's not. Really good yeah. impersonation. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> so um. Leia realizes that she has to get a message to Ben telling him the truth about her real father. And then back to the mirror bright for a second. Here's another, God, I just love what Claudia Gray is doing, the filling in the blanks. Another beautiful little moment to add to the tragedy of Alderaan, which is a planet we never saw in the original movies. It was no. just exploded. Well, we, we saw we, parts of briefly. it. Okay. We saw it briefly, but we never got to land and see the beauty, beauty of Alderaan. She says that- They were that, a peaceful place. They didn't have an army. Yeah. You know, that, that so messed this, up. this children's lullaby about a moon, she, Leia thinks like, I bet you that kids looked up at the sky for like a day oh, and were sing true. And I was just like, Claudia, you <laughs> bastard. That ma literally made me go, ah, man, that's, <laughs> how dare nicely you? Done. Nicely done. It's just, uh, at, I thought it was wonderful. Okay, qu question for the two of us is, for the three of us as we're wrapping up, how do you think the book is going to end? I believe, um, in, I feel like Kesterfo's there. I, even though it seems like they're pulling in the centrists who want strong, you know, want a stronger government and they're just sort of reeling them in to be sycophants who can't do anything and will definitely get voted out the next time, uh, despite any attempts to, you know, delay or destroy an election but um they're just reeling him in but i still think he's a good dude and he'll he'll figure it out i'm worried for greer and joff joff is like a mini han he's just like ready to go yeah yeah and i hope we get more about ben uh, even a little bit just like a little bit i'm curious too, too much I'm curious too, because this book came out after Force Awakens and I'm not sure how much of this and how much info Claudia Gray had as to what Ryan Johnson's script for The Last Jedi was gonna be and ha and what those flashbacks revealed. So like, I wanna see that, Rachel, but there's another part of me that's like, okay, but don't contradict, don't contradict. No, so not, like, you, yeah. you can overdo it. Same with the First Order. I want some kernels. Yes. But I don't I, want, and luckily we don't have time for them probably for her to yeah you know, yeah she's led us along this path so absolutely far. i think Maude, before we get to your final thoughts and we wrap up i now am really dead set on i hope there's a poe dameron appearance i hope there's like a there's like a pilot's meeting and leia's like well i'm out of politics what am i going to do now yeah. and then some pilot comes up and he goes hi i'm dameron poe dameron and then it's just like end of book how do you think it's going to end lose it for you Hector that was all I was gonna say <laughs> Mod, you read it didn't you yes you read the whole I read it <laughs> you, you lied yeah. I didn't lie I actually didn't lie I was very careful about how you asked we me we have to end this call said, we have to end this call I we're, not a lawyer you we're not friends me, so I I'm never afraid. the you words the words I did not read I the book don't. did not come out of my mouth but I refuse spirit. to answer this question. Bye by omission. Bye by omission. Bye by omission. I read the whole book and then went back and listened to this part. Oh, Great. guys. It's Great. Bad.
Great. Well, you know what, Maude? Why don't you tell everybody where they can join us for the after show where Rachel and I are just going to chew you out for 30 minutes. Okay. Where can okay. people join us? Yeah, head over to Geek Bomb's Discord. You can get access via Geek Bomb's Patreon, patreon.com slash Geek Bomb. If you head into the Discord and you have the access, uh, we do a voice call. So all my other people, oh my, I never lied to anyone, not even in the Geek Bomb Discord, not anyone. And if you had blatantly said, did you finish the book? Oh. I'm a lawyer right back. I Ooh. You never lied to my face, but you know what? I if have you're an like, did you finish the book? I would have been like, I mean, I know how you would feel if I did that. So like, yeah. you did I lie to my it. face, Maud, but by omission. And now I have an announcement to make. Maud is actually the daughter of Darth Vader. <gasps> I need to let everybody know <laughs> she lied to me. She didn't tell me. Oh my gosh. All right. Um really broken hearted i don't know your homework is to finish the book i don't know what to tell you people you know that that's what you have to do um okay did it it's great <laughs> okay and a very exciting thing we're announcing next month's book right now rachel do you want to do that for us do you want to do yeah. that for us yeah heck yeah um yeah we're we're announcing tonight so finish the book but our next book after that is gonna be da -da 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 -da, lovecraft country by matt ref uh which is really exciting. It's a novel from 2016 that explores Lovecraftian horror through the lens of Jim Crow era racism in America, very timely, and has been adapted into a new HBO series produced by Jordan Peele, which is also premiering. And JJ. Very and cool. JJ. Um, so make sure you grab your copy before Wednesday, August 19th, whether that's a physical book, ebook, audiobook, library book of all of those types, uh, let us know. We'll give you your homework assignment next week when we wrap up the book. But for now, finish Bloodline. Nice. Okay. Nice, Brian versus, okay, Mod. Brian versus says, nice, I wanted to read this <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's it's great. Come a fly flew up my nose. Yep. <laughs> oh, I don't know if we, I'm about to see the instant replay of it too now. This is gonna be great. <laughs> Can I see it? This is gonna go up. This is so amazing. <laughs> Oh, uh, did you see it? Did you see it? Did it happen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, <great. laughs> Becky P says, yay. Avery Adventurer says, ooh, that's exciting. Jimmy Sprinkle says, next book, hype. David Nichols Jr. says, oh, <laughs> awesome. This is fantastic. Everybody's so excited about it. Everybody's so excited about it. And I have a bone to pick with the Nerdist account in the YouTube chat earlier when we were talking about Alderaan. Nerdist, just like Maud, was like, no, we saw many pieces of Alderaan. How dare you, Nerdist? How dare you? It's not like it's, it's too soon. It's too soon. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been, too soon for been 30 years. They didn't do anything. Exactly. Uh, Miss Necromancer, also thank you for this feedback. That's exactly why we um, announced tonight. She said, gotta, just got to say that I love the earlier notice because it gives me time to buy the book. So Absolutely. we have heard you. We're going to keep doing things like that. And always remember to send us your recommendations on Twitter, on Facebook, on Goodreads, Instagram, hashtag Nerdist Book Club. Uh, and I didn't get robbed. I'm moving house. And when we do the show next, it'll look different. Ooh. Yeah, maybe me too. Maybe I'll have some action figures next week as well. But guys, thank you for joining me on today's episode. Uh, uh, thanks for, uh, for letting, uh, thanks for always getting drunk with us. And I'm talking to the audience watching at home. Thanks for always getting drunk with us and talking whatever book we're talking about. And especially Star Wars. It's been such a treat mm, to I talk about this, this book. It's so good. Even though one of our own has betrayed us and read to the end, it's fine. It's fine. I call for a boat of Luke. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know why you just didn't start and finish another book. I don't know. That's what I did. I started reading Ian yeah. Fleming's James Bond, the first Ian Fleming James Bond. I'm doing book. that too. Okay. I'm, yeah, I take long walks, guys. I need more books. <laughs> <laughs> I've got plenty of recommendations. <laughs> oh my gosh. BLC, what is this? Black Belt 23 Black says, Belt 23. traitor. <laughs> Just like from Force Awakens, that Stormtrooper guy. But the one concern that you guys <laughs> had was that I would spoil something and I accidentally did say, you know, something from in a chapter after. Uh, but, you know, I didn't, I could have, and I didn't, and I was proud of that. But you... <laughs> <laughs> Avery Adventure says, 
This was a really fun discussion. I really love this community. And WJ Baggins says, yeah, that first bond is a rough read. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's really? pretty misogynistic and racist, uh, even though some of it's very cool and spy and British. It's a very interesting thing. But hold on. Or, yeah. So Clever Girl said that was a really Slytherin thing to do, read it ahead. Was. It I don't was. know. It felt pretty brave to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was not admitting Slytherin. it and not technically mm -hmm. lying. That's also a very Slytherin move. Lawyer Absolutely. Slytherin, syn almost synonyms. Absolutely. And I say lawyer. this with love for my dad, who's yep. a good lawyer. He wrote yep. He's but you're right, bad. Rachel. Lawyer and Slytherin and Maude are all synonymous. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Guys, well, keep that's... it up. I'll wreck the book for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I freaking you dare you, would. man. I'll be so mad. I'll be so mad. <sighs> oh, man. I'll read all of Lovecraft Country in like two seconds and just spoil the whole thing, man. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, that's our episode. Go join us at the Geek Bomb Discord where we're going to keep teasing Maude and yep. keep talking about Bloodline. And, uh, and then we'll see you guys next week.